Hi, my name is Tom Miner. I teach chemistry at Dayton Christian Schools. I've been here about 40 years. I'm a Christian, I love the Lord. And uh, to me, chemistry is a study of God's creation. And the particular topic that I'd like to share with you on this videotape is on heat of solution. So when we make solutions, sometimes solutions can be an endothermic heat of solution. And in your book, you know, that you probably saw most books talk about heat of solution or change in enthalpy is the word they use. Uh, the H is sometimes called enthalpy. Uh, and so we look at the amount of energy that the solute and the solvent have before we make the solution and then how much they have after we make the solution. So sometimes it takes energy in, and we call that endothermic. Now let me ask you a question. If you took energy in as you made the solution, would, sol would the solution actually be hotter or cooler to the touch? Let me ask you that again. If it's endothermic, it's taking in heat as it makes the solution, is the environment, is the beaker going to feel hotter or cooler? Well, if you said cooler, you got it right. Because as it takes the energy in to make the solution, it cools off the actual beaker and the, and the liquid. And so when it takes it in, we put a plus there because the heat's added into the solution. While other solutions, when you make a solution, the heat of solution or the change in enthalpy is called exothermic. And for exothermic, we say negative delta H. Again, the delta means change for any of you that don't know that. And so it's a negative enthalpy, that means the energy is given off. And so as it gives off energy, then that would make the environment hotter. Now, I'm going to do two examples for you today. I wrote them up here so you can uh, see them, and if you want to write anything down, you're welcome to. Uh, I'm going to make an ammonium chloride solution. And so ammonium chloride is a salt, and so I'm going to take a, a beaker of water, which I have ready for us, and we're going to add a certain amount of salt at certain mass in intervals, and we'll see what happens to the temperature. If the temperature gets cooler, that means it's endothermic. If the temperature of the solution gets hotter, that means it's exothermic. And then the second one I'm going to do is I'm going to take some concentrated sulfuric acid, and I'm going to add that to water. And again, well, what we'll do is we'll change it, uh, um, see the change in temperature. And so what I want you to do as you watch it is figure out for each solution is it endothermic or exothermic. So if you come over here, here is our setup. So here's a beaker of water. Uh, I have 50 milliliters. I already um, I got a, um, I used a graduate cylinder and got exactly 50 milliliters. Uh, again, I have a stir bar in here and I'm stirring it and I have the thermometer in there to record the temperature. Can you see what the temperature is? Look real carefully and let me go over here so I can also look. And let's see, what is the temperature? All right, it looks about the 23. Is that what it looks like to you? All right, this say 23. And so um, I'm going to keep a piece of paper out <laughs> and think about how you, you would see on the screen there. All right, and so for the heat of solution, we're going to start out at 23 degrees Celsius. If I put it here, is that a good place to put it, or do you want it up here? Up here, okay. So, what I've done is I've weighed out, and right here it is, um, uh, ammonium chloride. You can see the name on the, on, the, on the bottom here, ammonium chloride. Again, it's a salt, um, a lot like uh, sodium chloride. It's just a regular uh, salt. And so what I've done uh, with my balance here, and um, I have a balance that I've already weighed this out, and I have 10 grams, 10 grams, 10 grams. I have 30 grams in total. And what I want to do is I want to slowly add uh, this ammonium chloride, 10 grams, to the beaker. And uh, we're going to see what happens to the temperature. So I'm going to add a little bit of the time. I may have to increase the, the rate of stirring here. I'll increase it some. All right. Now, as I'm increasing it, can you see any change in temperature? I haven't looked yet. Have you looking at it? What's happening to the temperature? Can you see a change? 
All right, so what do you see? Going up or going down? Well, it's going down, isn't it? And uh, I have to get around here to see it better. I'm going to call that 9 degrees, all right? So we started out at 23 degrees. I added uh, 10 grams. And wow, how many degrees did it change? 14 degrees, right? So let's see what happens if we add another 10 grams. And uh, you know what? I'm experimenting. I haven't done this myself. In fact, what I've always done for my students in the classroom is I always had them take a test tube and fill it half full of water, and I just put a scoop in and had them shake it, because it's like salt water. And they felt, oh, it got cold, all right? Uh, so now, uh, because you're not here for me to let you shake it, we're doing it this way. So I'm gonna add another 10 grams, and let's see what happens to the temperature. So watch carefully. Let me double check and see what it is. Well, it's right there about 10 degrees, it looks like. All right, so I'd written down nine, so that's not too far off. So I'm gonna add another 10 grams. Now, at some point, even with stirring, we might end up with uh, the solute being in the bottom of the beaker because uh, I might make a saturated solution. And saturated is when it's holding as much uh, of, the, of the solute as it can possibly hold. And I'm looking at it, can you see there's like a lot of big chunks that, that is just not quite dissolving. So I think we've uh, reached the point of saturation, so I don't think we're even gonna try the other, um, the other mass. Now let's see what happened here to our temperature. And what does it look like to you? I'm, I'm thinking it's about seven. Is that what it looks like to you? All right. So, so we're going to say seven. Now, if we added another 10 grams to it, do you think it would make any difference? And the answer is probably not, because I've already reached the saturation point. So I really can't dissolve any more of the solvent. So the question is, and I'll hold this up so you can see the paper, the question is, is this endothermic or exothermic? What do you think? Has everybody decided? And if you said endothermic, you got it right. And why do I know it's endothermic? Because the beaker got cooler. Oh boy, is that cool. That is like almost out of the freezer cold, all right? And so, um, I'd love to have you feel it, but since we can't have you feel it, I thought we'd use the thermometer. Now, I want you to think a second. What do you think would be a practical application to this endothermic heat of solution? Where or when would we ever want to use that? Can you think about an idea? How might you use this, this process of endothermic heat of solution? Do you have an idea? How about at, you're at a game, like a soccer game or a football game or a running track, and you get a sprain. What does the athletic trainer do? They go get a cold pack, don't they? And it's at room temperature because they just got out of their kit. They don't have ice there. They just have this cold pack. And what do they do? They smack it a couple of times. And what are they doing? They're letting the... the, the, the um, solvent that is in that pack mixed with the solute that's in the rest of the bag and it's an endothermic heat of solution and it takes and why do you want to put cold on the spring so it doesn't swell up on you all right so i'm going to change it up a little bit so i'm going to turn off my stir plate and how do i get my stir bar out of there and the answer is i use a stir bar retriever and so i'm going to take the stir bar here I don't know if I even showed that to you or not, but anyway, here's the stir bar that was in the beaker while we were doing the ammonium chloride experiment. So I'm gonna get another beaker here. Oh, by the way, look at this beaker over here. We were doing an experiment the other day in class and, and we had a saturated solution and look how the crystals grew. Isn't that beautiful? So this was a solution, a saturated solution and we put a string down that saturated solution and, this, and the, uh, the solution came up the string and as the water evaporated, 
it grew the crystals that was in the saturated solution. So that was just a piece of string. Um, this one here, you can actually see the string better here. Right there, you can see what the string was. And so again, that's what that was, the string. And uh, as the solution came up the string, and it, the water evaporated and it left the salt that we had. And I thought you would like to see those beautiful crystals. Now, back to where we are. All right, so I'm going to do another demonstration for you. Uh, I'm going to put in uh, 50 milliliters again of water into the beaker. And I'm going to put the thermometer in and again like we had before. And I'm going to turn the stir plate on and we'll put the thermometer in here so that the stir bar doesn't hit the thermometer and so you can see the numbers. Now, what I'm going to do this time, and I have to wear gloves for this one, uh, I'm going to take some concentrated um, sulfuric acid. You know, uh, Coke, they say it's the real thing. <laughs> it's the real thing. All right, well, this is the real thing. This is uh, a straight uh, sulfuric acid, okay? It's uh, a lot of things I could tell you that it has a yellow top. Sulfuric acid always has yellow tops because the acid sometimes will uh, destroy the label. And so we have it color-coded and uh, red would be a nitric acid and blue hydrochloric acid, but yellow is um, sulfuric acid. So I have 50 milliliters of water here, and so I have a piece of paper uh, here, and uh, we're gonna check the heat of solution, 50 milliliters of water, and I'm gonna add 50 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Now what I'm going to do is add it five milliliters at a time, and every five milliliters we will stop and check the temperature. So let's see what our starting temperature is. Well, earlier today when I was setting it up, it was 20, but right now it's still cool from the last one, and so I've got 14. By the way, the last time we went from 23 to 7, so we changed 16 degrees. So for the um, ammonium chloride, it was a 16 degree difference. Uh, I went ahead and poured out uh, the uh, sulfuric acid for you. Again, this is room temperature now. Uh, the water and the sulfuric acid are the same temperature, so they're both about, uh, about 14 degrees. Watch the thermometer. I'm going to add 5 milliliters at a time. And so right now I'm at 50, and so I'm going to add 5 milliliters. And all right, there's 5 milliliters. Now, is the temperature changing? All right. You watch and see how much it goes. Oh, by the way, did you hear that the stirring is at a different rate now, too? because the sulfuric acid made it easier for the, the, um, the stir bar to stir than it was before. All right, I have about 29, is that what you see is 29? So we started out at 14 degrees and we went to 29. Wow, 29 degrees. That was just five milliliters. Five milliliters took us up 15 degrees difference, wow. Did you expect that to happen? Let me add another five milliliters. All right, so we add another five milliliters, and you watch the thermometer. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Right on five. Oh, can you see there's even steam coming out of here already? In fact, I should have told you, I think I can make this water boil without heating it. And how am I doing that? By using heated solution. All right, let's check the temperature. 43, is that what it looks like to you? All right, so let's say 43. Wow, we went from 14 to 29 to 14. So the first time we increased by 15 degrees and we went up another 14 degrees now, we've gone up 29 degrees already, all right? Is that incredible? All right, now I said I think I can make it boil. Now let's see, what is boiling temperature in Celsius? For water, it's 100 degrees. I think we can get it to 100 degrees. So let's add another five milliliters. Oh, look again. Can you see steam coming out? And not only steam, but you can see the um, condensation inside the beaker, because the beaker is cooler than, and so it's uh, condensing here. Now let's see what happened to the, oh my goodness, look at the temperature. What would you say it is? 
I'm going to say about 72. Does it look like 72 to you? So now we've added 20 milliliters and we went up to 72. Let's see, 43 and we went up to 72. So what is that? 19 degrees, right? So we went, the first time we went up 15, second time 14, this time 19 degrees, all right? Now, I said I think I can make it boil. We're almost up to 70. I have to get up to 30 more degrees. This add, instead of five, let's do another 10. This add another 10 milliliters. I can still see seam coming out. Here's another 10 milliliters. I'm taking a guess at it. And aha, yes, I hit it on the notes. All right, again, see the seam coming out? Can you see the condensation on the inside of the beaker? I'm going to call it 83. Oh, so it went up another 11 degrees. Wow, we've gone from 14 to 83. That's 69 degrees already, all right? Well, let's see what we can do here. Let's just go ahead and add the rest. Well, maybe this, see, I've got 20, so I'll add 10 more. And let's see what happens if we add 10 more milliliters of the straight acid. All right, that's a little less than 10, but let's see how that does. Um, it looks to me like it's up to 89. Would that be what you say? So that only took us up another 6 degrees, 89. So let's go ahead and just, we've got about 11 milliliters left. Let's pour the rest. Now what I'm actually making is a one-to-one -one, uh, water sulfuric acid solution. And I actually will use this later on in the year for an experiment. Did it make 100? Uh, not quite. I got 99. <laughs> we went from 14 to 99 degrees. So we've gone up 85 degrees. Did I heat it? No, this doesn't have a heater on it. It's just a stir plate. All I did was I used heated solution. Now, here's the big question. I assure you all have the answer. Is this endothermic or exothermic? As I made the solution, it gave off heat. The beaker got hotter, the solution got hotter. So endothermic or exothermic? And the answer is exothermic, right. So how can you use that? Well, again, there are some applications where somebody needs to have heat uh, for something and they don't have heat with them. And so again, a medic will sometimes have in their, um, in their medical kit, they'll have a cold pack that they can cool something or sometimes they'll have a solution that has an exothermic that they can heat something. So, I hope you learned something today about heat of solution, and I hope you enjoyed the examples. Thank you and goodbye.